buried in a file dated 1954 is a story that's been forgotten by most, save for residents of Walesville, a small village in upstate New York. That July, an Air Force F-94 Starfire was flying toward an unidentified object to investigate it when something went wrong. Within 25 minutes, the plane would crash, taking the lives of four people on the ground, destroying two houses and an automobile with a family inside. A military spokesman said a fire caused the crash, but an investigation later found no evidence of smoke or oil in the remnants of the cockpit. Strangely, the Blue Book file mentions that as the jet approached the UFO, a wave of heat engulfed the pilot. Within seconds, he and his radar men were forced to abandon the jet, now on a collision course to the town below. So, why hasn't this gotten more press? And is there evidence of a military cover-up? Or does this incident have a less mysterious explanation? We're a new channel covering declassified files. Subscribe to join us. The story starts the night before, July 1st, 1954. According to the Condon Report, a University of Colorado study funded by the Air Force, reports began to come into the military depot in Rome, New York, of a UFO. The Associated Press reported this too, claiming over 1,000 calls were made to the local paper, jamming the switchboard between 6 and 10 p.m. Residents in a 25-mile radius of Rome reported seeing an object, silvery, and like a flying golf ball or a toy top. A commercial airline pilot in the area saw it too. He measured it at 20,000 feet and said a light was shining from it. Here's what's interesting. The Condon report says an officer in charge believed it could be a balloon, and if it were still there the next day, he'd have it investigated. On July 2nd, that happened. The following comes from the official Air Force Summary of Circumstances. The F-94C, an early interceptor built by Lockheed, took off at 11.05 a.m. Once in the air, ground control requested an intercept of an unidentified aircraft at 10,000 feet. After reaching the target, the pilot identified it as a slow-moving Douglas C-47, a military transport. It's at this point when control asked them to investigate a second craft. It was lower and in the direction of Griffiths Air Force Base. Quote, as the pilot started a descent, he noted the cockpit temperature increased abruptly. This caused the pilot to scan the instruments. The fire warning light was on, and he informed the radar operator of this fact. The fire warning light remained on after the throttle was placed in idle. So the engine was shut down, and both crew members ejected. Interestingly, a page in the Project Blue Book file gives a different story. It claims the jet was scrambled to check on the UFO in the first place. Though there's a caveat. The account comes from third-party researcher Donald Kehoe. Kehoe was a Marine Corps pilot who became arguably the most well-known UFO researcher of the era. His article, Flying Saucers Are Real, published in the magazine True, went the 1950s version of viral. After countless interviews with military officials, he said he believed the Air Force knew flying saucers were extraterrestrial, but kept it hidden to avoid panic. He didn't think their intentions were hostile, but rather surveillance, linked to our invention of the nuclear bomb. In 1953, the Air Force's press secretary in the Pentagon called him a responsible, accurate reporter. It makes sense why Blue Book cataloged his account of the 1954 Walesville jet crash. Kehoe cites two witnesses, these appear to include either the pilot himself or those who briefed him afterwards. He suggests the jet was scrambled to check on the unknown object. When it got there, the pilot reported it as strange and gleaming. The radar operator attempted to call the object. No response. Suddenly, as they neared the UFO, a wave of heat, like the blast of a furnace, entered the cockpit. Fearing the whole plane might burst into flames, he shouted, bail out, bail out. He got a glimpse of the unknown object as it passed overhead. Looking back at the F-94, he groaned. The jet was plunging straight into the village of Walesville, New York. Newspapers back up this report. 
Jet kills four in car, house, AP wrote the next day. A jet fighter plane returning from a quick scramble to investigate an unidentified plane crashed in flames in a crossroads hamlet Friday and killed four persons on the ground. A mother was in her home preparing lunch for her children when the plane impacted her house. Two parents and their 11-year-old son were in their car when it was incinerated. We also have our first major discrepancy here, and it's connected to the ultimate question. Was this crash caused by the UFO itself? The Air Force initially told reporters the cause of the crash was unknown. The next day, they said a fire in the cockpit was to blame. But a top secret report of the investigation, later obtained by journalist Jan Eldritch, suggests otherwise. It writes, Investigation revealed the primary cause of the accident to be a malfunction of the aircraft fire detector circuit. The cause of the malfunction could not be determined. Air Force personnel examined the plane's ventilation system and found no evidence of smoke or oil created by a fire. It continues, It appears the pilot interpreted a normal temperature rise as an overheat cockpit condition. Since there was no evidence of an in-flight fire, the fire warning indication received was probably due to a malfunction. Did you catch that? The official explanation basically relies on a major coincidence. The cockpit became a bit hot right as a fire warning light happened to come on, tricking the pilot into thinking there was a fire, causing him to do the unthinkable, abandon the jet over a populated area. But consider the other official account of this, the summary written right after the crash. The cockpit temperature increased abruptly as the plane began to approach the lower flight level of the second UFO. Kehoe's account gathered by Blue Book says something similar. As the plane streaked towards the UFO, a wave of heat mysteriously filled the cockpit. The stifling heat was increasing each second. And consider this. What was so extreme that it caused the bailout to happen directly above Walesville? The Air Force summary calls the ejection successful, which is, well, not the word we would use. If it really were just a misinterpreted warning light, it's reasonable to ask, couldn't the pilot have found a less populated area to ditch? Or is it possible the situation really was far more severe than the USAF officially admits, as Kehoe suggests? We're left with no answer. But the last UFO was never identified. Some claim because it was below 10,000 feet and in the vicinity of Griffiths Air Force Base that it must have been another military craft. A spokesman even contradicts what the official records state. Speaking to the AP, he said the bailout happened when the plane was simply headed back to base after the ID of the C-47. He makes no mention of the second UFO to the papers. We only learn of it from files later declassified. So, what we're left with is basically one of two scenarios. The first, we'll call this the mental gymnastics scenario. As in, we're forced to go through several mental gymnastics to explain it this way. Under this scenario, a coincidence caused the fire warning light to malfunction right as the cockpit became overheated. And, according to the official Air Force investigation, it was just normal cabin heat but because the warning light went off, the crewmen were just following procedure when they abandoned an 18,000-pound jet with a payload of 48 rockets above a neighborhood. Oh, and the second UFO the jet was approaching, according to the USAF, was probably just a military plane preparing for landing, because why not? For some reason again, we'll stress, the Air Force conveniently forgot to mention this to reporters and nowhere in the files do they ever attempt to check with their own base's flight records to see if a plane really did land around 11.30 a.m. We almost forgot. That object seen in the sky the night before and the night after? That one that a thousand people called in about? That was probably just a balloon, according to the Condon report. Funny enough, we found no record of any confirmation of this assumption. And the only time the Air Force attempted to intercept the object? Well, it resulted in a crash jet with a very weird wave of heat. The other scenario, number two, we'll call this the unexplained scenario. 
It requires far less assumptions, but at the time, would have probably made Air Force personnel and citizens pretty uncomfortable. In fact, it only requires us to accept one thing, that the object the F-94 encountered had technology capable of interfering with its systems. We've seen this before, and if you've been following our work with It's Redacted, you probably have too. In 1976, UFOs over Tehran temporarily disabled Iranian Air Force jets in pursuit. These pilots did not report heat, but did experience instrumentation failure. A defense intelligence officer at the time remarked these were electromagnetic effects. A 1986 encounter involving a Japan Airlines cargo plane over Alaska witnessed two unidentified objects near the cabin. The captain later said he could feel heat on his face. A larger, disc-shaped object trailed them. Francis Tronson and Provence case in 1981 is another where heat appears to have been involved. That winter, a 55-year-old farmer heard a strange whistling sound while working on his farm. He went to investigate and stumbled upon a device that had the shape of two saucers, one inverted on top of the other, the color of lead. It took off almost immediately once discovered and left burn marks on the ground. Investigators later found the soil had been heated to 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. Nearby alfalfa had chlorophyll levels 50% below normal. Interestingly, a study published in the journal Nature two years ago confirms this is possible. Exposure to certain types of electromagnetic radiation can reduce photosynthesis. We could go on, but the point is, what the pilots experienced above Walesville, New York in 1954 is broadly consistent with other sightings of unexplained phenomena. If, as Kehoe suggests, heat in the cockpit really was high enough to disrupt consciousness, it's far more understandable why the pilot decided to bail directly above the village. If, as he and the AP article suggested, the jet was sent to investigate the UFO in the first place, the same UFO residents saw on the ground the night before, it explains the Air Force's apparent desire to wish it away as a balloon and the heat as a mere coincidence. A UFO is one thing. A UFO that causes the deaths of four civilians is another thing entirely. Perhaps the crash had a natural explanation and these were just a series of coincidences. But, as mentioned, the Air Force never again attempted to confirm the identity of the low-flying UFO in its records. And they didn't even mention the second encounter to reporters. Their official story to the public was different than what declassified files later say. 66 years later, and this case has been all but forgotten by the mainstream, though we imagine some residents in Walesville remember. We're hoping a bigger spotlight on this may give us more answers on what happened that day. If you have any new information, or just want to share your theory, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. And we want to give a special thank you to our Patreon supporters, including David B. Without you guys, it wouldn't be possible to do this. If you enjoy our channel and want to support our production of one episode a week, join us on Patreon. It really helps us maintain consistent production. Thanks, and see you next time.